Welcome to the first of hopefully many videos on Diablo 4, depending on if Blizzard managed to not mess this up massively. I've been a hardcore Diablo player since I was a child. One of my first gaming memories ever is walking into a store, seeing Diablo 2 in a little CD case in a shop and picking it up and installing it and just being absolutely blown away by the game. The music, the loot, I even have the sound effects of the game on my Twitch stream for followers and subscribers and donations. All sound effects from Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. A huge Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls fan. I played the game non-stop, got to very high greater rifts. Um, yeah, and can't wait for Diablo 4, I'm excited. There are some things I'd like to see them improve upon from the previous Diablos and add to especially taking from games such as Lost Ark when it comes to big end game instances and bosses. I'll talk about that more in a minute as we go through the new developer update. You can sign up for the beta by going on to blizzard.net, setting up an account and signing up to the Diablo 4 page and you will be invited to a beta if you are selected. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the quarterly update that was released a few days ago and uh, discuss what they're talking about here. So you obviously start with the standard spiel about Diablo 4, who's gonna be talking, yada, yada. I'm just gonna pick out the key bits. I'm not gonna read you through the whole blog post that they've put up here. So beginning they start off by basically pointing out that it will be a seasonal model. Many of you enjoy the seasons in Diablo 2, Resurrected and Diablo 3 and have asked for more extensive season support. We agree one of the most fun ways to play Diablo is through season so we're making the first one available soon after launch and building a dedicated team to bring you up to four seasons a year. Obviously basic maths suggests that there'll be a season every three months each with major new features, quest lines, enemies, legendary items and more. Diablo 4 seasons are modelled after those of Diablo 3. When the new season begins, all the characters from the prior seasons are moved to the Eternal Realm, where you can keep playing, levelling up and collecting loot. To play in the new season, you'll create a fresh character and experience the new seasonal features and content while levelling up alongside other players. So, this will be following from what I can remember the Diablo 3 seasonal model where there's a whole new set of greater rifts and new leaderboards and items and builds with every single season. I don't mind the seasonal model however I do hope that inside each season there is end game dungeon instances that require cooperative play and require a lot of teamwork to complete so therefore there's a target for top players there's something to achieve rather than just mindlessly going through rifts i would like to see something at the end that poses a challenge to people who get towards the end of that season and the higher levels and the higher paragon levels they point out something very important here which is that all power will come from playing the game and it will not be able to be purchased for money this has obviously been a huge issue of controversy after diablo immortal and further on in the blog post they do make it very clear that there will be absolutely zero power to be gained with money everything would be gained through either the free season pass or through playing the game okay let's break it down then so we're into seasons hello heroes of sanctuary my name is joe well my name isn't joe but this guy's name is joe so here they talk about new content we think it's important that players see the game is changing in meaningful ways each season will be released with a fresh new gameplay feature and quest line that introduces new challenges mysteries and possibilities in the level up experience this is something players should begin to experience before the end of their first hour of play that's excellent. That means the leveling process will be quick in the seasons. One of the benefits of our seasonal direction is that it enables fun new ways to play throughout your character's progression. Refreshing the meta, this is important. This is how you keep people coming back. It's by keeping things fresh for all classes. Interestingly, this is the uh, Paragon tree, I believe. Obviously, uh, if you don't know what Paragon is from Diablo, it basically allows you to add points and skills and powers to your character well after you would reach max level. So this is a way to add longevity to the end game. Glyphs, you've got strength, intelligence, willpower, dexterity. Glyphs, which you can pick up. And it used to be you could put them in uh, armor, I believe it was, back in the day. Very in-depth, uh, in that is. It's excellent. I like that. Diablo 4 is a vast game. We want to ensure that we are keeping existing content features in a place where they remain fun and challenging to participate in. To do that end, to that end even, we will always be evaluating the state of the game to regularly revitalize all the stomping grounds. One clear example here is looking at the relative balance between classes, builds and powers. Diablo is a game that is about creating exciting, overpowered builds and while we don't want the balance to balance the fun out of the experience, we don't want to create situations in which imprecise tuning squash creativity. We'll also be constantly adding new legendary and unique items, paragon boards, glyphs. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. But I, I just want, I want more than just rifts. That's what I, that's really what I want more than anything. I want more than just rifts. 
With each season, we'll be looking into ways to improve the player experience. This is under improving the game. As a live product, we intend to hold Diablo 4 to an exceedingly high standard. We are here to have a build, to have build a live game that we can be proud of, and the best way to do that is by engaging our players directly. Based on the feedback that we receive, the team will identify quality of life features, blah, blah, blah. Okay, enough of that. Live events. Okay, this is more like it. Fat Sanctuary is a living world filled with people, creatures, and factions striving to meet their own ends. Attentive players should be on the lookout for new live events that will crop up each season. An example of a live event might be the warning of an impending invasion of the drowned, which may last a weekend, or the arrival of a strange peddler amidst the cracks of dry steps. These events provide a gateway to new adventures and unique rewards. I hope this is what I'm looking for. I hope this is, you know, tough bosses that require a server to get together or a group of players to get together. It's kind of more down the line of what I'm looking for. So season journey here, they actually touch upon something, which is just what I've been saying. Completing the season journey is quite a feat with the final step demanding the character overcome an extremely difficult encounter with an especially deadly foe. With future season journeys, we are regularly adding pinnacle level difficulty challenges for players to complete. Okay, th this is what I want. Okay, so this is what I want. I hope it's cooperative. I hope it's not just single player. I hope there's cooperative stuff as well. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Like Diablo 3, the season journey is free for all players. Excellent. Completing season journey objectives also grants progress towards the season pass. A new feature with a battle pass style progression that advances alongside the season journey, enabling players to earn even more rewards by just playing. The season pass has both free rewards, cosmetic premium currency gameplay boost, and paid rewards, cosmetics and premium currency only. Okay. That's acceptable. I can accept that. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to talk about the season pass here. So uh, rather than have a subscription, it's a box cost and a season pass, which you can get for free, but also you will get paid for extras if you wish to. The first thing they point out importantly here is there is no pay for power options. Excellent. Seasons will add all new gameplay quests, challenges, meta changes, and quality of life improvements. The key part here is the season pass recognizes players' dedication with greater rewards unlocking as you play more throughout the season. There will be a single track of rewards with free tiers that are unlocked by just playing the game and leveling. Premium tiers will provide no in-game power. There are gameplay boosts in the game on the free tier, which basically just allows you to level up quicker when starting a new season. It's to save people having to go through the same monotonous leveling up process. So let's talk about the two tiers then. Free tiers and premium tiers. Throughout the past, players can earn a variety of rewards for free just by playing. At any point during the season, players can purchase the premium pass to unlock the ability to earn premium rewards. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Season pass awards, cosmetics. Best ones won't just be in the shop. Here they confirm the season passes do award free season boost as well as premium currency on the pay track and free cosmetics on the free track. Going forward onto the point of season boost, they just want to confirm that you can't pay for these season boosts. They are completely locked behind gameplay. So that's what they're confirming here. So don't worry about that. Everyone will have to play the game. And basically, people who put the more time in are going to get the rewards quicker, but everyone in the three month period, we'll be able to get up the rewards and level up multiple characters. So I think that's what everyone wanted to hear. It's quite quite interesting how careful they're being. We're really hammering down on points that were such large criticisms of Diablo Immortal. So here we go, the cash shop. So let's have a look at the cash shop. We've got a picture here of different items. Are we playing Necromancer? Which is that one there. I don't really like that skin, but that's fine. But that's okay. That's not too bad. That's the Druid skin. Can we see any more? No? Um, that's the assassin skin. I don't mind the assassin skin actually. Necromancer skin's a bit cliche. You know, we're not all we're not all just skull wearing madmen. By the way, I will be playing Necromancer. It's what I played in Diablo 2, and I also played Witch Doctor, which was basically what it was before they got Necromancer in Diablo 3. So here they just confirm you can pick up multiple items from each skin set and add transmogs, etc., and mix and match as you wish. Let's talk about what players can expect. The shop sells cosmetics with premium currency. Cosmetics give players even more options to customize the visual appearance of their characters. Hold on a second. I think that's all the same skin though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I don't mind the chest piece, that's all right. Nothing offered in the shop grants a direct or indirect gameplay advantage. So while many of these may look like powerful pieces of gear, they have no in-game stats. The problem with in-game with a lot of cosmetic purchases, and I feel the same with Lost Ark, because you just end up looking the same as everyone else, which is why I often wear just wear the end game gear that I get from the bosses. The shop is optional. Players can experience all core and seasonal gameplay features without spending money. Our goal is for players to enjoy going to the shop. <laughs> that sounds funny, sorry. Buy something when it catches their fancy. The shop is transparent. It's important players know exactly what to expect, I think. Let's have a look at this. A quick from wardrobe, supported classes. I think this picture here kind of breaks down each individual part of the purchase. Best looking cosmetics aren't exclusive to the shop. Diablo 4 will ship with 100 
with hundreds of transmogs unlockable from drops in game. Oh, nice. Including dozens of armor sets of the highest visual quality. There are incredible pieces, unique and legendary quality items for players to find without ever going to the shop. Oh, nice. The shop offers more diversity of choices, not systematically better choices. So how do you know which one's the shop and which one isn't? I mean, I prefer the left hand one from that one. Let's have a look here. I prefer the right hand one on that one. I think they're both nice, to be honest. Oh, screen capture of legendary armors earned through the game left versus armor cosmetic in the shop right. Oh, so the game's left in the shop's right. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's down to personal taste, isn't it? I don't think anyone can unanimously say, oh, the shop's better than the, than the in-game or the in-game is better than the shop. They're both good. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Armor Trasmogs in the shops are usable on all characters of the class. I hope fashion game isn't the end game, though, in Diablo 4. Many of the cosmetics in the shop are class-specific fantasies, which wouldn't necessarily make sense visually on other classes. Once you unlock a cosmetic from the shop for a given class, you can use it on every character of that class on your account. Ooh, excellent. There are special cosmetic exclusives to the season pass, which will celebrate the theme of the season and look similar across all the classes. All right, closing thoughts. It's a good, it's a good update. It's a good update. I, I just want to, I want to, personally, my opinion, I want more on this pinnacle level difficulty challenges. If it's just creating characters and doing rifts all the time, I don't know. They're going to have to pull out something special on the season journey and the unique elements to each season to grip me. Because for me, it's all about aspirational pinnacle content and doing that and challenging myself. That's, that's what it's about. I think I've moved beyond just grinding incremental upgrades for no reason other than just to get a few more stats. Maybe not. Maybe once I hear the Diablo soundtrack, it'll completely change my mind. I don't know. But anyway, that's my take on uh, Diablo 4. It's the first of many videos. We're going to be following Diablo 4 closely. Is it going to be any good? We don't know. But it's a flagship game and it's a huge release. And I think there's a certain age of gamers who grew up playing Diablo, who just love Diablo beginning to end. And it's a big, it's a big game release, to be honest. I, I kind of... I want it to be amazing. I am very dubious as to where it's going to turn out like, but we'll see. Take care. Thank you for listening. If you're interested in Diablo 4, drop a comment. What class are you going to be playing? What class did you play in Diablo 2 or Diablo 3? That's it for now. Peace out. Take care. And we'll see you around very soon.